Hey, good morning, guys. It's Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire, and I'm going to follow up on a video that I did about a week ago, a week or so, maybe a couple weeks ago, about the six-year-old student in Virginia that shot their teacher in class. Now, you can go back and watch that and see what I had to say about that, but I have a take on this. It's, it's going to be different than what you're going to hear on the news because of my experience as an administrator and a teacher, and I'm retired. It's been a few years now that I've retired, but you know, there's a lot of things, a lot of ways that I look at things that they don't look at. They don't look at it that way. So let's let's kind of dive into this. All right, I'm sh I'm sure you've seen it in the news about the situation with the with the student shooting the teacher. Since the original reports and what I have seen so far, there were some things that happened that are a huge surprise to the public. Not so much of a surprise to me. I'm not really surprised by what happened. But the student apparently had this gun brought to school. The parents had been going to school with this six-year-old every day. The parents had gone to school with him every day and stayed with him all day long until that week where this occurred. Uh, so they knew there were behavior issues with this child. And it was, it was apparent to everyone. I don't know how many meetings they'd had with the administration. I don't know what all had been arranged. I don't know what all the situation was and, and what the issue was with the child, but obviously they were aware that there were some issues. Now, it was reported to the administration at least three times that day that that student had a weapon. Uh, other children apparently saw the weapon told the teachers. The teachers searched the backpack. The teachers told the administrators. The administrators searched the backpack. Uh, the teacher said, you need to search his pockets. The administrators never searched the pockets. They reported it again later in the day. A student said that the, that child showed them a weapon. And they told the teacher, and the teacher told the administrators again. They didn't search them again. So you may look at that and go, man, how in the world? How did that happen? You know, are they liable? Can they be sued? Uh, it's very difficult to sue a school employee that is doing, that's in the course of their job, okay? If they're doing something that's in the course of their job, that's within the procedures and within the regulations that have been laid out by the, by the law and laid out by the school district, if they are doing those things, you know, without being negligent, it's very difficult to sue. Now you can school you can sue the school district and things like that for their policies and whatever, but it's hard to sue individuals. So in some states you can't. If they're if they're carrying out their job and they're in the process of carrying out their job, they can't be sued. Um, are they at fault? Is it their fault? And why did this happen? Okay, so let's look at a couple of things here. When I became an administrator, all right. Now this is twenty years ago. Okay. When I became an administrator, the way I was trained was pretty typical uh, of the way people were trained back then. You were trained to take care of the facilities. You were trained to take care of personnel, handle personnel, and you were trained to make sure that the procedures in, in the school environment was orderly and carried out by the rules of the school district. In other words, you were in charge of discipline. For the school in order for the school the number one thing that i was trained to take care of was discipline i was taught by the administrator that trained me that discipline came first safety and order and discipline came first before anything else if you're doing anything if there's something going on at school that's causing problems that things are out of order that things are you handle it okay immediately you stop what you're doing, you take care of that. Now, that's not really how administrators are trained anymore. That's kind of the dinosaur out the door mentality with, with administrators. Now, the concern is more with academics. The concern is more with relationships. The concern is more with being, the, they even go as far as saying, well, you're the lead learner in the school. You're not, you know, you're not really the principal. You shouldn't even be called a principal. You should be called the lead learner. You should be the example for everybody else. It's all about academics and all that kind of thing. Now, that's good. 
on one hand because that should be the focus. They're there. They're they're at school to learn. It's all it should all be about learning. But um, we've swung really far to that side of the pendulum and really far away from the discipline side of the pendulum. I remember an occasion where there was an administrator that was younger than me and uh, she had some work that she was doing and I had found out there were some female students. Uh, I had a report that they had drugs and I went to her and I said, hey, I just got a report that these, you know, these students have drugs. You know, you, I need to get you to go and because there were girls, I need you to go get these students and, and search them to make sure that. And she said, well, I don't have time to do that. I'm doing something else. I've got something more important that I, that I need to do. And I remember I looked at her and I said, there is nothing more important than getting the drugs out of this school right now. If there's if there's drugs here and we know it, we need to address that. That wasn't the way she looked at things. It was the way I looked at things because of the way I'd been trained. Now, things being the way they are, this was an elementary school. This was a six-year-old. Uh, for all I know, those administrators had never really been trained how to search a student. You know, they, they may have never been trained, you know, how to handle that situation. I don't know. I was. I'll, I'll explain to you in a little bit what I would have done given that circumstance, but I would have known what to do. You know, they may have, they may have had their district tell them, you can't search, you can't physically search that child. They may have been more afraid of the fact that if I search this child and I, I violate this child's rights and I do this and I do that, the parents are going to sue me. They may have been more concerned about making the parents mad and, you know, violating the, the rights of this child than they were about whether or not he really had a gun. They obviously didn't really believe he had a gun. A lot of administrators now wouldn't even know how to handle that situation necessarily. Now, those children that are in that public school, we have compulsive, you know, compulsory attendance laws where we make children go to a school. They don't get a choice. They have to be there unless they're homeschooled or whatever. But anyway, they have to be in that situation. While they're there, they are under the care of that school. The school acts in place of the parents. So while those children are there, they can't just do whatever they want to do. So if there are dangerous people in that school that they have to be around, the school is responsible for keeping those students safe from the dangerous students. If I go, and I know there's dangerous people all over, I know in the public there's dangerous, I have no idea who's out there, what they're gonna do. And I know anytime I go anywhere, I'm in a situation, if I'm at the grocery store, the service station, whatever, where there might be a dangerous person there. Now here's the thing, is if I'm at a store and somebody starts acting wacky, I can leave. I can leave, go get in my car, go home. Or I can defend myself. Or I can, you know, there's all kind of options that I have. But in a school, that child can't leave. If they're assigned a seat next to a student that's causing all kind of problems, they have to stay there. They can't get up and walk off and go, you know, they're in a school. There's rules. They have to stay in their desk. They have to be there for, you know, they, they can be stuck in a situation where they have to be next to a violent student or a dangerous student. Why are those students in our schools? I talked about that some in the last video, but they are there. It's not like it used to be where they weren't there. They're in the school. Uh, they might be in a different room than everybody else or whatever, but they're more and more being housed in the schools with other students, not housed separately like they used to be. So they're there. And if they're there and the other students have to be there with them, the school is responsible for their safety. Now, here's what would have happened if I had been in that situation, okay? As an administrator, I'll walk you through exactly what I would have done, all right? When I got the first report that there is a student that allegedly has a weapon, that allegedly has a gun, the first thing I would have done is I would have went, I would have got a, another person to go with me, but preferably another administrator, I would have went immediately and directly to that student, okay, where they were, 
I would have walked into the classroom up to that student you know, I would have looked all around them to make sure there wasn't anything there that I could see. I would have had them get up with the other person watching and me watching. And when we walked them out of the room into the hall, I would have stopped. I would have looked inside that desk and searched inside the desk that they were at, looked all around. If there had been a backpack laying there, I would have picked up their backpack. We would have went out together with that student. I would have taken them uh, back to my office or to the most immediate office I could get to or the room that was empty that I could get to so that I could search that student. Okay? Before I searched that student, well, actually, I would have immediately done that. I would have searched him, and I would have searched him thoroughly. I would have searched their backpack thoroughly. I would have searched, you know, and I, now I could not do like a police pat down. I couldn't touch the students, especially in a private area or anything like that. But I could have them turn their pockets inside out. I could have them take their shoes off. I could, I'm not going to go through all the process. I searched hundreds and hundreds of students. I've found all kinds of weapons. I've found all kinds of drugs. I've done this dozens of times, hundreds of times. <laughs> and I would, that's what I would have done right then with that student to make sure, number one, there's not a gun. Okay? That's the first thing I would have done. They would not have gotten any. And if I did not find a gun, Okay, I would have got them somewhere under eyes so somebody could watch them. I would have, <clears throat> I would have notified my principal. I would have notified the school district. I would have notified the resource officers if the school district had resource officers or my school had a resource officer that I was searching for a gun. There had been a report of a gun. I would have, all those people would have known immediately as soon as I got through searching that student. After I searched them, if I didn't find anything, I would have found out who the witnesses were. I would have talked with the teachers very quickly. I would have talked with every student that supposedly saw this gun and taken a statement from them and documented all of that. Oh, and by the way, I would have documented every step of the way. Everybody I called, I would have put down when I called them, who I called, what I said. Okay. I would have documented every student that I talked to, every teacher that I talked to, and what they said happened. If there was somewhere else I needed to search where the, where the weapon could possibly be, I would have went and searched there. I would have searched the bathrooms. I would have searched. I would have watched video to see where all that student went so that I, I would know maybe they put it somewhere. I would have done a thorough search with the help of other people to make sure that there was no weapon there because I knew legally that's what I needed to do. The safety of those students was the number one thing. And if people got mad because of how I searched that child, if people got mad because I kept that child out of class while all this was going on, they would have just had to have gotten mad because my job was the safety of those other children, period. Now, I would have done all that. I would have kept everybody you know, notified of what was going on. If I'd, if I'd have told them there was a report of a weapon, I'd have had an officer there. They would have sent somebody down there to, to kind of observe what all was going on. I wouldn't have been by myself. If that had occurred, they would have found that weapon. That teacher would not have got shot. After I searched, after I searched the student, I would have still kept them out of class because... If all the other kids, rumors are going around or whatever, that this, guy, this kid's got a gun, if I took that kid and put him right back in class, what kind of learning is going to be? I mean, those kids are going to be like, oh, my God, he's back in class. Why would I put them immediately right back in class? I would have kept them out of class, like I said, and you're like, well, that's making somebody have to sit there and watch that. Well, the nurse is going to have to sit there and watch that kid until I get this figured out. Bottom line, that's more important than anything else, Okay. I would have kept that kid under the eyes of somebody, another administrator, whoever. I would have notified his parents and said, hey, I just searched your child because I had a report that there was a weapon in his possession here at school. Now, that may be just totally a total lie. I don't know, but I'm going to err on the side of caution and I'm going to make sure, you know, that there's no weapon or I'm going to find out why they said he had a weapon. And if they're given a false report, I'm going to deal with that. 
but I, I searched your child and here's how I did it. And I would have explained how I did the search. Okay. And like I said, they could have got mad or not got mad. Or they, they may have said, thank you for making sure everybody's safe. I don't know what they would have said, but I was going to do my job. Now, that's what I would have done because that's the way I was trained. To be honest, I was trained more like a law enforcement officer. I knew how to do investigations. I knew how to do searches. I knew how to do, I knew what the law was for all that kind of thing. I knew how to do tribunals and place stuff in, on, on trials and stuff. I, I, I was capable of doing all that because back then that was what an administrator did. Now I think today that's not what administrators are, are doing. They're, they're so focused on these other things and these other things are important, but there's nothing more important than if there's a weapon in school, having the procedures in place to be able to find it and eliminate that threat to other students. Now, you know, when, when schools don't do that in a reasonable way, people are going to start suing them. And if they start getting sued because they're not keeping other people safe, it's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out because over the last 15, 20 years, everything has been about you know, individual children's rights. The individual rights of whatever the child, whoever the child is, are have been kind of really deemed more important than anything else. Now, am I saying, you know, special education is bad? No, no, that don't. I want you to understand what I'm saying. I understand there is a need for individualized, you know, attention and individualized instruction and things like that and special help for students that need special help that are learning disabled, whatever, you know, whatever is out there. You know, do we need to have, you know, access for children in wheelchairs? We need to have it. Yes, we need all that stuff. I'm not against any of that. What I'm against is when you have a student that is violent and dangerous and you put them in a school with everybody else and nobody else understands how violent and dangerous this student is and they're walking these halls and they're in, cause I've been in schools where people like that were there. They don't, they have no place in school. We need another way to keep everybody else safe. And we need to make sure that our administrators and our teachers understand how to deal with reports of weapons, with reports of drugs and things like that. And that we go back to addressing those, at least address them. If that had been addressed correctly, if, if I had been the administrator and you're saying, well, Chris, that's easy to go back and look at. No, no, that's what I would have done. That's exactly what I would have done because I did it over and over and over again. I did that with reports of weapons. I, I don't know how many times. And sometimes I found, well, I, I found guns. I found tasers. I found, you know, razor blades. I found Chinese throwing stars. I found, you know, you just go down the list of all the kind of weapons that I had reported to me. And I did the exact same procedure I went and found or drugs or whatever. And then I still had the role of dealing with the academics, of observing the teachers, of helping the teacher, of, you know, dealing with the parents, the relationship. I still had all that stuff. I still did all that. And I cared about the students and I cared about, you know, I, I loved my students. I loved the kids. But my job was to protect everybody, number one. And if we were having a meeting and that guy that trained me that was my principal, if something like that happened, we all stopped and we all addressed it. We quit the meeting. We stopped talking about whatever and we dealt with the emergency situation. And they come up a lot and we need to get back to having some administrators that understand how to handle that stuff. Because this situation could have been avoided, in my opinion, hearing what I've heard, if they understood how to search a student, that teacher would not have got shot. You know, are they gonna be liable? Or are they gonna be held? I don't know. I don't know if there's gonna be a trial, not gonna be a trial, if the school system's just gonna give her money, I don't know. But, but we need to, as a society, look at this and say, you know, how do we balance 
taking care of the rights of these individual students and letting them be with their peers, which is what the government wants, with making sure that students are safe and making sure that the other students are learning. You know, that's it's becoming more and more of a clash as, as things like this happen. And this is a unique situation, but it's not so unique either because I had people respond on my last video and say, you know what, when I was in school, we didn't learn anything because we had, you know, a, a kid in class that just completely disrupted everything all the time and totally took all the teacher's attention and would destroy the classroom and do all that. And they would go through all these things and they didn't get to learn because there was a student in there that prevented their education. It's not that unique a thing that happens. And it needs to be, well, we need to figure it out as an education system. And if not, nobody's going to be learning. Okay, so anyway, that's my spiel. If you have any comments, make sure to leave them below. Uh, if it's something wacky, I'll just delete it. So, you know, if you want to call me names or whatever, I don't really care. I've been called every name there is as a school administrator and a teacher. So um, <laughs> you guys have a good day. And again, thanks for watching. Bye.